How do I freestyle? How do I find my flow? I always feel like I'm doing the same moves over and over again. If you've ever asked yourself any of these questions, this is the video for you. So if you guys don't know, shuffling is a freestyle dance. Now it has evolved and choreos have emerged. However, it started out as a freestyle dance and all of, well, most of, nearly, okay, 99% of the videos you've seen me do are all freestyle. I've maybe done like one or two choreos. So today I wanted to talk about how I think about freestyling, some tips to help you find your flow, and an overall sort of template so that you stop thinking about what move comes next and you just find your flow and get lost in the freaking sauce. So for me personally, I prefer to freestyle. I find that when I do choreos, I feel a lot more stiff and a lot less natural because I'm thinking so much about it. But everyone's different. Some people are better at choreos and some people are better at freestyling. So choreo is obviously the antithesis of freestyling, but I wanted to kind of talk about how it can help you be a better freestyler. I used to be very anti-choreo. I was like, uh, oh, it's like not really true to shuffling, blah, blah, blah. But my perspective kind of shifted. I actually saw this TikTok that was talking about learning a new skill and how when you're first starting out learning a new skill, part of that process is mimicking somebody else. And then the more you do that, the more you can kind of pick up certain techniques and styles and then start to put your own twist on it or you might see connections between two moves that nobody else sees. And that's really when you become a creator. But I thought that was a really cool perspective. Like, yeah, I totally did do a few choreos when I was first learning and I did try and copy the shufflers that I looked up to. And then as I did that, as I got better, I started to make shuffling my own and make my own unique style. So moral of the story, don't be afraid to do choreos when you're first starting out to kind of just help you see how certain people throw moves together and how people flow and dance and all that stuff because that's really, really invaluable as you are learning. So I think a lot of the times when people are shuffling, they think about, okay, I start with move one, then I move to move two, move three, move four, etc. And sort of like in this list, and they're always thinking about what move comes next. Instead, I like to think about my core set of moves. Now, when I'm dancing, I will probably start out with something that's in my core set of moves. And then depending on how the song goes or where the beat takes me, I might break out into a spin. I might break out into a cool combo or even a glide. And then after I do that combo, move, whatever, I'll come back to my core set of moves. Doing this allows me to kind of reset and it also allows me some time to think about what I want to do next. Now, your core moves should be your bread and butter moves. These should be the moves you feel most comfortable with, the moves you like the most, and the moves you don't have to think about. Like, it should be all muscle memory. So, for example, a shuffler, someone who just shuffles, might have the core moves of the running man, T-step, and maybe some simple glides and spins. Now, a shaper, someone who just strictly cuts shapes, might have like the Charleston, the X-Step or Polly Pocket, and probably also the Running Man. Then somebody like me, who is a hybrid, might have the Running Man, T-Step, and the Charleston as their core set of moves, just as a really basic example. So when you're first starting out and you're learning how to shuffle, your core moves might be just really simple and they might just be like the running man and the T-step and that's totally fine. But you can also build your core set of moves by repetition. Just keep practicing certain moves that you really want to add into your foundation and practice, practice, practice until you don't have to think about them and they just come really naturally. There is a freaking cricket in my garage right now and he needs to sh sit down. I didn't squish him, I just made him shut up. I think it scared him. So I would say that step one in working on your flow is build your foundation. The next step from there would be to work on combos and work on tricks. So like I said, start out with your foundation and then break out into this cool new combo you practice and then come back. And then break out into this cool spin you practice and then come back. And you just repeat. 
Also, if you guys want to spice up your flow and learn some new moves and combos, then you should sign up for the Shuffle Vault, which is basically my directory of all the shuffling, shaping, footwork moves that I know with little tutorials on each one. I'll put the link to sign up down below, but it's a monthly subscription and it's only $10 a month. Kind of a steal, if I do say so myself. I just got this new little microphone headset set up, making me feel like a real jazzercise queen. <laughs> but uh, we'll see how it goes. You'll have to let me know how good the audio is. <laughs> So an example of starting with your core move and breaking out into a combo might be something like this, where I start out with the running man, go into a tough glide back, spin, and then back into the running man. So that combo, right? The kick, tuck, glide, glide back, and spin out is a combo you might need to practice on its own. But once you have it down, then you can start to incorporate it in your flow the way that I showed you. You know, maybe you're doing some running man. You go more into your core moves and then you break out into the combo and come back. Now, when you're first learning how to shuffle and you're first starting out, you might not stray very far from your core moves. You might just go core moves and new move you're practicing. So you might just go here. Okay, this is your core and then you break out into it and then come back. But as you get better and learn more moves and combos, you'll be able to stray further and further away from your core moves before coming back, right? So I might have like a really long sequence before I come back to my running man or rocking or something like that. So start simple and then build from there. So now I'll kind of show you guys some examples of how I might implement this template. because I think it's kind of fun, honestly. Now I'm gonna go through some of my old videos and show you that I've always kind of implemented this technique in some shape or form. So let's go through some of my fave vids. <clears throat> this thing on. So this video is actually one of my most recent favorites. So we start out kind of getting into it. I break out with a move and then I go into the Charleston. From here, I go into this cool little pivot move, which is not a part of my core moves, but it's a fun thing to do from the Charleston and I've practiced going from the Charleston into that move. I go back into the Charleston to kind of get back and reset again into the running man, resetting myself, rocking, and then into a little kick spin and a little combo. And then again, back into the running man. So you can see it's core moves break out into something cool. Like I'm always coming back to the moves I feel most comfortable with. We can continue with this video. More spins, running man again, little T-steps, boom, a glide, and then back into the running man, you know? So you can see, very common theme. Like I always say, when in doubt, running man it out. Enough with that video, let's do another one. Okay, this is probably one of my most favorite videos ever just because it's so raw and real and I was just having the absolute time of my life. And also whenever I'm at a festival, I tend to honestly revert back to mostly my core moves because I'm not like trying to be extra fancy. I'm just really enjoying the music and I'm not thinking about doing cool tricks or anything like that. I'm just vibing. So this video, I start out, of course, doing the running man 
do a little glide back into the running man, a little bit of rocking, another glide, more running mans. Then I go into this cool little combo, and then I break out with the Miami step, which is a move that I would consider right now part of my core moves, because I do it so much. I reset. I reset some rocking and do another glide. You can see this video is honestly a lot of the same moves repeated, a lot of my core moves repeated with just a few sprinkles of cool moves, tricks, and combos. And really what makes this video so great isn't the tricks, isn't the cool combos, it's the fact that I'm connecting with the music. And you don't need cool moves and cool tricks to connect with the music. All you really need is the running man, swear on my life. The running man is the most underrated move in shuffling. Don't forget it. And honestly guys, that's why I say over and over and over again to really build your foundation. It's more than just like the foundation is really important. It's also the fact that that's all you need for your shuffling to look good. I will stand by that fact till the day that I die. Yes, I think that cool tricks and cool combos definitely elevate it and make just like blow your mind. But it's not always about doing cool tricks. It's about the music and vibing and doing what feels right, right here. And like I said, this video, one of my faves, not doing that many different moves in this video. It's just a simple fact that I am vibing really freaking hard. <laughs> so again, guys, don't forget to sign up for the Shuffle Vault if you wanna learn a bunch of cool moves and tricks and combos. But I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you have any questions about freestyling or flowing or anything like that, feel free to comment down below. I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching and being a part of the fam. See you in the next one.